Hello everyone and welcome back to another one of my YouTube videos. So in today's video, I'll be going through an update of my watch collection. So this is my 2022 watch collection. Last year I did a video of my personal watch collection and I think it gotten quite a fair bit of views. So I think it's about 13, 14k views as of now. So one of my most popular videos still did. So I thought you know for this year I'll give you guys an update on you know what I've bought, what I've left, and yeah, you guys can see a bit of my personal taste. So let's get started. Alright, so let's get started with the Rolex. So this is the Rolex uh, 116000, uh, or otherwise known as the OP36. So you know, as a watch enthusiast, right, you know, I've always wanted a Rolex. I mean, who doesn't want a Rolex, right? You know, with skyrocketing Rolex prices nowadays, I was looking for a relatively affordable model at you know, below $10,000. Believe it or not, you know, $10,000 is not a lot of money when it comes to a Rolex. So my options were fairly limited. It was either an OP, specifically the 36, or maybe the 39, but an OP nonetheless, or you know, uh, Explorer. So I wanted a modern Rolex, so six, you know, uh, digit reference. So I wanted reliability and I wanted it to be, you know, a tool watch like Rolexes were meant to be. So I considered between an OP 36 as well as, you know, an Explorer 114270. Eventually I decided to go for this, which is the uh, OP 36. I think, you know, it's perhaps wears, it wears slightly larger than an Explorer and the Explorer, I know, I know the Explorer probably has a bit more heritage, but I simply fell in love with the OP because of how it wears. And if you guys can see, you know, the Explorer is an all black matte dial with Mercedes hands. It felt a bit too boring, you know, for my taste. I'm not sure the camera can capture this, but this is actually a very, a rather rare reference. So it has a black dial, uh, the 369 sort of Explorer like uh, layout, but the indices are actually pink. So there's a subtlety, there's a subtlety to it, you know, due to the black dial. But I like um, the flashiness of the pink uh, indices. I think it's a great balance of flashiness, but also you know subdueness. Yeah, it's not like the cotton candy pink that we see in the recent OPs. You know, that's very gaudy and ostentatious. It's very refined and restrained here. And again, when it comes, even though an OP is probably the most you know ubiquitous Rolex that you see nowadays, you don't. I don't really see. It. In fact, I've not seen anyone else. With this particular uh, watch, you know, black dial pink indices. So yeah, I thought it's a really sp special one. It was fairly affordable. Uh, I paid around retail for it. So yeah, this is my first Rolex. Is it my? Will it be my forever Rolex? Probably not. I'll probably want to upgrade it to a one one six two three four soon. But I couldn't find a which was actually my first choice. But I couldn't find a one one six two three four for under ten k. So if I do find one for under ten k, I'll probably let go of this for, you know, a thirty six date just which is probably the most quintessential Rolex out there. But yeah, until then, you know, I think this fits the bill very nicely. I really do love the pink indices. There's a, like a playfulness to it that I just simply adore. Alright, moving on will be my Cartier Santos, specifically in medium. So I just did a video about this. So you can go watch it you know, if you guys haven't done so. But if you guys have not seen the video, this is my, I guess, most recent purchase. I've always wanted a Santos, you know, I always wanted a Cartier. I was deciding between a Cartier tank and a Santos were very long, but there's nothing in the modern tank reference that I like. Whereas when I first put you know, the, the Santos on, the Santos, the Cartier medium, I just fell in love with the proportions. I fell in love with how elegant it was, but also how sporty it was. It's a very nice balance between sports and dress. Yeah, so you get you still get like the classic Cartier, you know, white dial, black Roman numerals, but the bracelet, let me just show you guys the bracelet. Look at that. The, the bracelet is simply you know, phenomenal. Really very, very nice. And... Even though it's medium, you know, it still has a lot of wrist presence on the wrist. And if you guys want to see more about this watch, do watch. I'll probably link it uh, above. So do watch the video that I did specifically on this Santos Cartier medium. But I would say, you know, I definitely love one of my favorite watches I think currently to wear. Just a very versatile, very wearable watch. Goes well with everything. And yeah, as a sports watch, I don't have to worry about it. Unlike, say, a tank, for example. Alright, the next watch is an independent one. So this is the Chrono uh, Toki. So I've always liked Chrono. You know, having founded this blog on micro brands, I've always had an appreciation for independent brands. And Chrono was one of them. I like the Japanese aesthetic, you know, I like how minimalist their design is. And when it came out with this, the Toki for anniversary, you know, I just fell in love with sort of this pinkish salmon hue. I also did a full length video on it, so which I'll link, I guess, somewhere above. So do check it out if you know, you're interested in this model. But yeah, you know, I paired it with sort of this uh, Nanim greyish blue strap and I think it really pops you know in the right lighting condition so yeah it's a very unique watch very elegant watch again something that's I guess functions as a dress watch 
but you know you can pair it with Tisha and Jeans and you'll still look great. Definitely again one of my more I would say one of the more unique watches in my collection, the Toki. Alright, next up is the big boys, the is the Monaco. Again, I have also done a full-length video about this, but you guys haven't uh watched it yet. Uh the Monaco I've wanted Monaco for very long, you know. This is sort of like my big boy watch, like something I put on, you know, when I just need need a little bit of confidence, a little bit of a boost. Uh it's the largest watch I think I have in my collection and due, and due to its square size it wears, you know, uh, fairly large as well. But I really do love um, the Monaco. It really just has, has this wrist presence that none of the other watches can match. I love the sportiness of it, you know, I love the unconventional nature of it. I love how it's been around for 50 years, the design has remained relatively unchanged and yet still looks avant-garde, you know. I went for, there are a lot of versions of the Monaco, right, but I went for, of course, the historic left hand crown one and I didn't go for the blue dial one if you guys notice I went for um, this sunburst grey which is a limited edition which I guess is rarer on the market you don't really see many uh, grey dial monocles out there and I think if again if you look at it the sunburst nature dial plays much nicer in the light than I believe the matte blue one which looks a bit flat and it's important to note that the grey one is historically correct as well when the monocle first launched it launched in blue and launched in grey blue one got a lot of tractions but I always like to take the path less, less taken so you know, I collected the grey one and again, yeah, I wear this when on a day so I just want to be a bit more different, I suppose. Alright, next is my IWC Mark 18 Le Petit Prince. Again, I have also done a full-length video about it, which I'll link above. So if you haven't seen it yet, do watch it. But yeah, no, I really do love my IWC. It's the Queen Essential. I think everybody should have a pilot's watch in our collection. And if you think of pilot's watch, IWC is definitely the first brand uh, you think of. But I not again. I don't really like the black boring dials, right? I didn't like the Explorer. I didn't like that of the regular Mark Eighteen either. So this bluish sunburst, sort of midnight blue, uh, dial of the Le Petit Prince edition of the Mark Eighteen really captured my attention. As I stated in my video, you know the Le Petit Prince has the story at least has like a significance to me. It was gift the book was gifted to me by a friend on my twenty first birthday, you know. So whenever I think of Le Petit Prince, the story and this watch, I always think of friendship. So yeah, I don't think I'll ever sell this watch. And I think, you know, again, it's quintessential, it's iconic, unmistakable as, you know, pilot's watch. I really do like my IWC. Again, very versatile as well. You can pair it with a suit, you can pair it, you know, dress down, no issues. Perhaps uh, it could be a one watch collection in itself. A very good all-rounder, I would say. Okay, next up is my Tissot Pure X and once again, you know, I'm not to sound like a Pokemon record but I have done a video on this so if you want to learn more about my opinions on it, do check out the video Essentially, you know, this is my poor man's uh, Royal Oak, right? I mean, like everybody else, I would love to own a Royal Oak especially a Blue Down Royal Oak but, you know, prices are ridiculous So when Tissot first came out, you know, with this Pure X, I fell in love with it You can see the bracelet is simply, the integrated bracelet, the finishing is simply I would say phenomenal for the price. You can see how reflective and how eye-catching it is on camera. And the waffle die as well. Some people think it's a bit homage. You know, personally for me, I don't think any brand should have like a stronghold over a particular dial pattern. That's like saying any any brand that does Gyoshi is a ripoff of Brigade, right? So yeah, I really do like how this watch wears. And again, there's historical context to it as well. You know, the Pure X is and reissue sort of of you know a historic Tissot timepiece of the 1970s so yeah I really do like the added provenance there and Tissot of course is a brand with a lot of heritage the waffle dial you know, looks great the, I love the blue and the right I think condition it really do pops because it's supposedly a bit sunburst as well and I think under a thousand dollars you know this is by far the, the best into integrated sports watch that you can find will it replace the Royal Oak of course not but it definitely scratches the itch I would say at below a thousand dollars so yeah this is sort of like my Almost my you know, daily wearer, my you know my everyday watch, if you will. Okay, so now on to some of the more fun pieces and more affordable pieces that you know I've collected along the way. I really do like this one. So this is a custom, you know, uh, Casio Oak. I had G-Shocks in the past. I had Casio Oak in the past, but I sold all of them for this. When I first saw this, this is of course inspired by the Dow Artist collaboration. Uh, I believe it's called the Rainbow Jellyfish. Jellyfish, because you know of the transparent. Uh, band and cage, rainbow cost well, the dial and indices and the splatter, you can see the galaxy dial, sort of like the paint uh, blotches on the dial. 
it's so eye catching. It's really lovely. Like a G Shock to me should be fun. It should be inexpensive. You know, it just should be like pure fun to read. And this really encapsulated that. I first saw it. I think the Dow artist, you know, being worn by Kane Curry, tennis player that I admire on court, like in French Open and things like that, Wimbledon. And I knew I had to get one, so I went to search for one, and yeah, I managed to find it. So, honestly, you know, obviously I do have many other watches and at a higher price point, but this is one of my favorite watches to wear. I think pop, pop, it may even be the watch I wear most often. This is my legit sports watch in a sense that you know, when I go to a gym, which I'm trying to go more of. Uh, New Year's resolution. This is my gym watch, right? So I wear this like what two, three times a week, and yeah, it, it's just a lot of fun to wear on the wrist. You know, resting in between sets. You know, looking now at it, um, looking even just pressing the button, playing around with it, it's just very eye catching. One of my favorite watches, and I never, I never had a modern watch before. You know, I always believe in factory, 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 but this definitely changed my mind about that, and I love this watch to death. Alright, so the next watch is this, the Timex Marlin Snoopy Edition. So when people think of Snoopy in the watch world, you usually think of the Speedmasters, Omega Speedmasters Snoopy. Of course, I love Snoopy, you know, I I grew up watching the comics in life, uh, the comic section of life, which is like the newspaper here in Singapore. So yeah, I love the Snoopy, but of course, the, the Speedmaster Snoopies are going for ridiculous amounts right nowadays. So when I saw the Timex Marlin and I saw uh, the Snoopy Edition, I knew I had to get it, I knew I had to get this anniversary one. If you guys, let me bring this close to the camera. So if you guys can see this actually Snoopy, you know, on a typewriter, you know, and as a, I consider myself a writer, so um, this sort of encapsulate, I guess, sort of like the writer in me, but also the kid in me, you know, Snoopy, the kid, the comic, on a typewriter writing, right? So yeah, it sort of reflects that a writer or journalist in me, I suppose, and it's not, in a, it's not an expensive watch, but it's just again a very fun watch to wear. It looks quintessentially dress watch, so you can pair it with a suit, uh, no issues. But no, again with the Snoopy, just as a little bit of fun, a little bit of, you know, um, eccentricity, I suppose. Yeah, but again, very clean. Now I really do love the looks, and yeah, Timex is a historically important company, so I have a lot of history and heritage. So I guess it's a steal to me at this price point. I really do love you know the Snoopy. Okay, next is my Seiko sports watch. So you know when Seiko relaunched, and let me bring this closer to the camera. When Seiko relaunched the sports watch, uh, the, the Seiko Five series, you no, know, I I I'm actually a big fan. You know, I, I know a lot of people didn't like it because the price went up, but I'm actually a big fan. I think it looks much better than before. And when it came out with this, the Seiko Five One Piece collaboration, I knew I had to get one. You know those that know me personally know that I'm a big anime fan. You know, and One Piece, you know, is one of my favorite animes along Demon Slayer. So when it came out with this, this is a Luffy edition. Oh my goodness, I knew I had to get get it. What I love about it is that, okay, when I think of Seiko 5, of course, I think it's a fun watch. It's like, a, you know, something you wear for fun, right? This One Piece edition, this Luffy edition, like, encapsulates that for me. I love, okay, if you are not a fan of One Piece and never heard of the, the anime, okay, you can skip forward, but fans of the anime, you know, I really love how, you know, the, the, the watch sort of encapsulates the King Kong gun mode of Luffy, right? Gear 4, Gear, Gear 4, Luffy, you know, I love the the motifs on the dial again even the strap as well I thought was fabulously done so you can see the King Kong gun sort of um, strap motif so yeah you can see uh, the One Piece logo here as well the show hat logo well it's such a great watch for an anime fan of One Piece like me and but the thing is even if you're not a One Piece fan even if you're not an anime fan like it just looks like a normal Seiko Fire watch right like if you are, if you are, if you don't know the anime at all, you, you will not think of it as like an anime watch. You're thinking, oh, that's a cool design, that's a very sporty uh, looking watch. And that's why I love it. It's, it pays very good homage to the anime franchise, but it also, you know, is subtle in the sense that it, wearing, wearing this will make you feel like a whip. Let's, let's put it that way. So yeah, uh, this is currently the only Seiko that I own and I just love it, you know. It, again, along, I guess, with my G-Shock, it's one of my... This is the watch I bring to all my staycations, you know, just, it's just a great uh, banger of a watch. Alright, up next is my Vincent Mango Swatch. So I've always loved Swatch, you know, Swatch to me is a very underrated brand. A lot of people think of it just like a cheap throwaway watch, but people don't understand that Swatch is a long history, right? There's a reason why the Swatch Group is called the Swatch Group, because, you know, in a, during the cross crisis in the 1980s, Swatch, you know, when they put out all these quatch inexpensive watches, save the watch industry, which is why even today the Swatch group is called a Swatch group. 
So it's a brand that has a lot of history, a lot of context, a lot of significance. And I think Swatch uh, is at its best when you know it puts out watches like this, sort of these artist collaborations. Now I'm a fan of art, specifically impressionist arts. You no, know, I, I love before COVID trying to the museum, seeing uh, art pieces, and I actually saw Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night uh, once in Paris when I was on exhibition there. So it really left an impression with me. And when I saw, you know, uh, Swatch doing a collaboration with MoMA, I think early last year, I knew to get one. And luckily I got it quick. I believe, also they told me I got the last piece in Singapore. So there's only a very limited amount of pieces in Singapore. It's now all sold out. You can't get it anywhere. Um, yeah, I mean, look at it. it it's, the watch is just a canvas for the art. That is Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. Even the strap, you know, it's so striking. It really just feels the MoMA logo here. It really just feels like, uh, like an art piece on the wrist. Look at how striking it is. Again, this is by far the cheapest watch that I own, right? Like, it costed about a hundred, low hundreds, hundred twenty maybe around there. But it stands out amongst all the other watches, right? It, it stands out uh, due to the brush, the brush strokes are like, so vivid that you know it really just brings me back to seeing the experience and the memory of seeing Starry Night in the museum. So yeah, I don't wear it. Okay, to be honest, I don't really wear this much because it is a bit hard to pair in terms of clothing. But every time I look at it in the watch box, I'm like, wow, this is a stunner. I can't believe I got this for like a hundred plus dollars. Okay, so, you know, these 10 are like the watches I've bought in last year alone. So I have bought quite a fair bit of watches. I do have some watches that are left over from the last year's video, last year's collection. So let me just go through them. Number one, of course, is my Brown Speedy. I probably will never sell the Brown Speedy. I think everybody needs a speed in a collection, you know, if you are a watch enthusiast, you know, the going to the moon, things like that. As you guys can see, you know, under this lighting, the brown dial is really prominent here. And I love the brown dial, it gives off this tropical look, but it's not a true vintage watch. So, you know, you still have that modern reliability and it's fairly hard to find as well. So I like that it's just a little bit different, but it's still quintessentially Speedmaster. So yeah, this is still my collection. Uh, the next watch is the my Nomo Tangente uh, Double Glass Edition, Red Dot Edition. So again, this is still my collection because I really do still love Nomo as the brand. And even, even though, you know, again, I have more expensive watches now, it just I just love the Bauhaus design. Look at it, it just pops and I love sort of like the salmon uh, color. Again, if you compare it to the Toki, you know, even though even though both watches are, the dials are described with salmon, it's a very different shade of salmon as you guys can see. So, you know, they don't sort of conflict in any way. And yeah, I, I do I do like sort of the minimalist aesthetic of, of this and of course I do like uh if you guys can see there's a red dot at six to signify you know uh, Singapore's moniker is a little red dot. So yeah, it's something that reminds me of Singapore and myself home. Um and it's still in my collection. Now, another watch I still have in my collection, let me cheat a little bit. There's I don't have enough space in my watch box, right? So it's this. Uh my long jeans nineteen uh forty five. Again, this was something that this was a watch I bought about one or two years back now, you know, I, I, to be honest, I have thought about selling this watch because, you know, um, I'm not a big fan of what Longines is doing recently, which is just re-release, re-release, re-release uh, of historical timepieces. But whenever I think about letting this go, you know, I just look at it, I'm like, oh my goodness, it, you know, it looks so good. Yes, again, it has that copper dial that again looks, still looks very different from my Nomos and of course from uh, the Toki. Yeah, it reminds me of, it's inspired by the and old vintage Longines that Ben Climber of Funinki has. And I just think it looks so different, even though you know, Longines has done like a million re-releases till date. I just think that it looks so different from um, the other re-releases re that he has launched. Yeah, so this is still my collection. I'm not sure if it still, will still be around come next year, but as of now, you know, I still enjoy wearing it. Yeah, it this very near vintage vibe that I don't think any other watch my collection uh, really encapsulates. And another watch I still have is my Hamilton Kaki. Again, Hamilton, great brand, Kaki. Um, the perhaps the most distinctive, uh, iconic field watch ever made. You know, when I think of field watch, I think of the Hamilton Kaki. And I love it in this sort of white dial configuration. It's a shrap monster, so I can pair it on anything. Currently, I have it on a leather NATO, and I think it looks great. It's actually accompanied me to a lot of vacations. So I actually won this to uh, before COVID to Cambodia. So a lot of great memories attached to this watch as well. I am a bit thinking of letting this go, I won't lie, but every time I look at it, because, okay, let me explain, because I'm not a feel person, right, I, I love the aircon, I love, you know, I'm not really like a feel person in any stretch of the imagination, you won't see me hiking for nuts, but I do love sort of the iconic look, I love how versatile the watch is in terms of strap options, so yeah, as of now, it's still on my collection, on my wrist. 
Alright, so you know, that rounds up my 2022 watch collection. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, I'm, I'm glad I can show you guys some of the new watches I picked up. Let me know your thoughts on my collection, you know. I try to have a more vivid collection, you know. I don't try to follow the hype, so I don't think any of my watches here are really hyped up. I just buy what I like and I think in the end, as a watch enthusiast, that's all you gotta do. Just buy what you like, keep what you like, you know, and don't really think about what other people say, I guess, you know. Yeah. Alright. That rounds up my watch video. If you like the video, do give it a thumbs up. Do subscribe to the channel if you want to see more interesting videos like this. And as always, leave a comment, share the video around, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Ciao!